my name is kaushal singh sisodia i am iit kanpur alumnus so i think there are some people who are um, uh, out of india and uh, the uh, iit iit is the very prestigious institute in india and it is uh, giving a engineering uh, degree for uh, for students and i have 21 uh, plus years industry experience right now i am working as director and founder of unicommerce technologies private limited and i am also chief mentor of the iot academy for skill development and training and uh, before unicommerce technologies i have worked with many mnc's i have worked with ericsson av in sweden for 7 years i have worked with st micro electronics private limited uh, based in noida and it is again mnc and um, uh, the, the main company the headquarter is in france then ubinetics india private limited and saskian communication today's uh, agenda is uh, we will start with agriculture yield in india versus development uh, developed countries so the people who are not from india they can also relate respective to their country that how their country is performing to uh, uh, with respect to other countries developed countries or the neighboring uh, countries and what is the contribution of agriculture in gdp so, uh, we would specifically look uh, with respect to india but you can also find out uh, from your country perspective then uh, introduction and importance of smart uh, smart irrigation so irrigation is very uh, critical and uh, implicit part of uh, agriculture so we have to check that what kind of traditional way of uh, doing the irrigation and what are the the smart ways or the latest uh, technology driven methods we are using then uh, adoption of iot in irrigation so iot is the latest technology uh, the the acronym for iot is internet of things so uh, the so this is the the accessing any component any uh, device remotely by using internet so if we access anything controlling or monitoring that we do by using internet then it is called internet of things and sometimes the machine can directly communicate to each other without human intervention and the machines can be very far from each other and at the remote location but still they can they can communicate so this is this comes under iot the internet of things technology and how we can leverage iot in uh, irrigation uh, domain in irrigation sector that is also uh, we have, we, have, we will look into it and the solution provided by unicommerce technologies in irrigation automation uh, unicommerce is basically a industrial automation company uh, where we are giving solution in industry 4.0 and we are leveraging the latest technology like iot machine learning data science and uh, uh, so these kind of technology we are leveraging and we are uh, developing uh, iot gateways and devices and we are also providing the complete dashboard so end to end solution we are providing for the uh, industries as well as the smart systems that can be used in smart cities smart industries uh, so these kind of solutions we are providing so we would be uh, briefing you about the products and the solution provided by uniconverse in irrigation domain right now but we have many other products also that is not a scope of present uh, uh, presentation then we will take question and answers so let us start with agriculture yield in india versus develop, developed countries uh, so the people who know india that uh, they would be knowing that india has been a farming country for a long time and main uh, uh, economic uh, or we can say the gdp contrib contribution is from agriculture and uh, uh, since india is very populous country and here half of the labor force is uh, like uh, occupied in uh, farming they are some or other be direct or indirectly uh, uh, dependent on agriculture and farming and india is a big uh, exporter of many agriculture products like oat dry fruits and natural grain products india has been uh, uh, is second largest uh, exporter in the world but there is still a issue that uh, we are facing some kind of obstacles that we have low harvest yield and uh, the reason are um, manifold there are some unfavorable harvesting rain storms and there are 
many natural things happen and somehow uh, india has been lagging behind in adoption of the technologies now it has started adopting like iot and uh, the other automation methods it has started adopting and the yield now in the last few years has started increasing so uh, if we compare this is a small table where we have listed few countries like india china spain united states and world the rest of the world here we have shown that in 2020 what was the productivity in india so the first column if you see that this is the column where uh, the fruits were produced in the million hectares the how much area the fruits were uh, produced so in india the 7 million hectare we had produced the uh, fruits and the 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 yield was uh, 9.1 metric ton per hectare uh now if we uh, come to the vegetable part this first two column is for the fruits the second two columns are for the vegetable so the production was done in 9.2 million hectare for vegetables the yield was uh, 39.3 metric ton if we compare with china china was uh, like they had uh, produced in 11.8 million hectare and the production was also uh, close to 11.6 million tons per hectare for the fruits for vegetable they had uh, uh, produced in 24.6 million hectare and the uh, the metric ton was the production uh, per hectare was 23.4 metric ton now uh, if we compare like spain that is very small country and united states uh, uh, that uh, that is also uh, quite big uh, producer of agriculture product there we can see the productivity the the average uh, uh, yield was much more than india so here if we talk about the fruit it was 23.3 while india was producing 9.1 and if we talk about uh, the the vegetable it was 57.36 and india was producing 39.3 so the region of low yield is because we people in india people are not uh, like uh, still lagging to utilize leverage the latest technology so that is the reason that we have um, uh, lower yield in compared to other developed countries and this is the another way of uh, uh, seeing the the graph uh, the yield and it was since 1969 to 2009 so we can see the united states if we talk about cereals and the vegetable two graphs we have taken so in cereals united states was the top at the top then china was the second one and world if we talk about the rest of the world was even performing better in compared to india so in past if we say almost 40 years india has been underperforming in compared to other countries either we take cereals or the vegetable so now uh, uh, this is up to 2009 but now things are changing uh, india is performing better than rest of the world but still lagging behind with uh, in compared to other countries now contribution of agriculture in gdp as we discussed earlier that india is uh, very much dependent on farming and agriculture it has significant uh, Uh, contribution in gdp uh, probably in uh, 20 years or the 30 years back the contribution to gdp for agriculture was much more in, in percentage wise percentage it was more than the services but now india is providing lot of services so the the contribution from services to gdp is more and industrial contribution is also still uh, like quite much 25.92 agriculture contribution is 20.19 it is lower than other sector but still it is very much significant uh, comparing that uh, agriculture a lot of people are involved so this is very uh, very much significant and if we start improving our production probably the contribution percentage wise and the absolute terms it would be more uh, we can improve it by using the technologies now if we talk about the factors that is uh, used in agriculture or the components these are the very simple things that we uh, we know that soil is one of the factor uh, the quality of soil and the type of soil land size and type it also depends that how much yield we can do uh, weather condition crop and seed selection plowing sowing uh, type of fertilizers used 
water usage and the irrigation system protection from weeds and pesticides harvesting so here these are the major factors but we are major concern for today's webinar that how to use optimally water or what kind of irrigation system we can use the most uh, uh, if we talk about which part is using the the most technology that is the uh, the irrigation system so when we uh, use irrigation system we can automate the process we can use different kind of technologies so that is the one that we are going to discuss today and uh, let us see that uh, uh, what is the importance of smart irrigation system so today's uh, today we we would be focusing on irrigation system but there are other factors also that uh, that can improve the yield that probably we can discuss in the next session but today we are totally focusing on the irrigation system uh, so before starting the, uh, the the irrigation system we should understand that how the water is used as a resource uh, throughout the world uh, so if we divide uh, into the three part one is the developing and poor country how they are using the water then rest of the world and the developed countries so we have uh, divided into to the three parts developed countries rest of the world and developing and poor country so here uh, we can see the we compare developing countries they are uh, the water uses is almost 82 percent in agriculture industrial use we are using 10 percent and domestic we are eight percent so india is lying in this uh, in this sector in this uh, uh, part and if we talk about de developed countries because they are uh, adopt, they have adopted industries uh, long back and they have lot many industries there the industries are using 59% 59% of water agriculture is using 30% of water and domestic is 11% so uh, we know that water is a very critical uh, resource for agriculture and uh, uh, we have to be very much careful for using the adequate quantity and quality of water so that we can have the best productivity for the agriculture so uh, let us see the the next part where we would uh, we would discuss about the irrigation so these things we have already discussed that uh, uh, water is, has to be very much adequate in quantity and quality of water should be very good we have to be very focused about the conservation of water because because it is a, uh, a scarce resource and uh, as uh, we have to very much careful while using the uh, water and because of this climate change the, the the rain is also become very much irregular so usage of water is has to be very very careful carefully done and if we have proper usage of water then we can solve other problems like water logging soil salinity and that affects the crop yield so we have to have very efficient irrigation system so let us discuss that what are the other factors so in irrigation now there is a tradition uh, like uh, adoption of micro irrigation technologies and under micro irrigation generally we have drip and the sprinkler uh, methods that are the most popular one and that are used for the improving the product uh, uh, crop productivity and as per the data uh, up to 40 to 80 percent water can be saved if we use drip and sprinklers and the overall water use efficiency can be increased 100% if we properly design the, the complete irrigation system uh, in compared to the 30 to 40% that is done by conventional practice. And uh, along with irrigation, there is a way that we can use uh, fertigation also. When we have liquid fertilizers, how can we include the fertilizers? Uh, with the irrigation that that can also be done because of the advancement of the technologies we can do uh, the irrigation and fertigation in very much planned planned and controlled way we will we are having a lot of products uh, unicanvas is having a lot of products and we would be discussing a little bit today as per the as per time uh, permits and if we discuss what are the need of smart irrigation because we have technologies that can make the uh, the conventional irrigation very much smart so what is the need so need is that uh, if we adopt the uh, smart irrigation then we can increase the crop yield up to 230 percent 
and we can save uh, water up to 70%. And uh, in some cases, uh, uh, we can, uh, if we have very much uh, well designed, we can save water up to 100% also. Crop grows consistently healthier and mature fast if we have uh, very much uh, well planned and smart irrigation. It can reduce the human efforts. We have unified view of the soil characteristics, including moisture and the nutrient contents. We can have a smart notification in case of abnormalities. Because of the, the, the technology, the IoT technology if we use, we can have uh, we can monitor all the critical components, vital parameters of the soil and uh, the crop. And whenever it goes beyond some uh, limit, beyond some threshold, or we see some abnormalities, we can immediately generate the notifications to the to the farmer to the user. We can have better long-term uh, landscape health. Generally, uh, since of inadequate use of uh, uh, fertilizers, we, we see that after three, four years, the crop productivity in a land reduces, reduces a lot. But if we have very much well-planned irrigation and the fertigation process, we can increase the landscape health. Early maturity result in higher and faster return on investment. So basically, we know that in India, uh, we are not fully utilizing the, the productivity of the farms. So uh, if we use these systems, we can have better return on, return on investment if we use we are using the capital intensive technology, but the ROI will be very fast. We can gain, uh, we will gain because of the increased yield and productivity. And fertilizer use, Efficiency will increase by 30%. Fertilizer and chemical treatment can be done using a micro irrigation system itself. And we would be discussing that how the fertilization can be done together. Uh, together. We have we have a, a controller that controls uh, uh, irrigation and fertilization together. We can plan, we can pre-plan, we can uh, make a schedule that uh, how to do the irrigation and at what should we have to do the fertigation and we can have a mix of that. Undulating uh, terrains, saline, water logging and all these things can be uh, better managed by using the smart irrigation. So what are the sources of irrigation? Uh, this, this is quite obvious, everybody knows it, that uh, we have tanks, tube wells, canals and other wells and there are some other sources. So basically we generally have canals in some of the uh, so the most of the North India, we have canals in, and then tubers are the, the major uh, factors that, that are being used in agriculture fields. Let us quickly look into the types of irrigation system. So uh, if we talk about uh, the current irrigation system, that is surface irrigation, localized irrigation, and sprinkler irrigation, drip irrigation. These are the different irrigation methods that are being used in today's, uh, today's world. Uh, I will not go deep in detail because uh, uh, I think I assume that people are aware of the different irrigation methods. And this is the pictorial way that this is the traditional irrigation where we used to have check basin method, furrow uh, irrigation, strip irrigation, and uh, basin irrigation. But in, as per the modern irrigation, we have uh, like, uh, uh, re redevised or redesigned into the surface irrigation. Uh, surface irrigation again, it takes care of uh, like it is part of furrow uh, irrigation and strip irrigation in the modern in the modern irrigation. Then drip irrigation and the sprinkler irrigation are the new ways of doing it. Here we can save a lot of water because everything is very much controlled and we can have a uniform uh, usage of water. And if we talk about the components in the modern irrigation, which is filters. And if we talk about drip irrigation, where it is, we have heads, main line, lateral, lateral lines, drip nozzles, sprinkler. If we use sprinkler irrigation, there is power generator, pump, pipeline, sprinkler. And we have uh, mod, uh, like some sensors also used. Soil sensor, moisture sensor, temperature sensor, rain sensor, flow sensor. And we have a communication system because we have to communicate. If we have to control and monitor the things, uh, different walls, filters, 
then we have to have a communication system that will uh, uh, send messages or the signals from the controller to the end wall then we have a control and feedback system so these are the different parts in the the education system and we have a uh, this is the few filters that are used in micro education like we have media filters because we have to make sure that the water that is being used that is sent free and it is clean water so that the the life of the education system can be increased so we have to make sure that water is properly filtered uh, and we have different kind of filters uh, for that case skin filter hydro cyclone filter and this filter and we have to make sure uh, like we again have automation or some kind of uh, uh, method so that the water is properly flush from here from the filters so uh, from this picture this shows a complete uh, uh, like irrigation for a small part a small a small field we can say so here we can see there is a canal and then from canal we are collecting a water in a pond and uh, then we have a pump that would be uh, uh, showing the water and we have different kind of valves here the bypass valve is there and then uh, at, at the uh, last time there is a control valve we have a different kind of filters here so uh, here like we have the hydrocyclone filter that will make sure the water is uh, like properly uh, the sand is properly separated from here and then we have further the sand and media filter in the in the right hand side and we have a venture in injector back uh, wash valve so different kind of valves are there so you can see that there are some mechanical part but those can be controlled those could they, those can be controlled by using the electronics or the uh, the latest technology we can use automation and other than controlling we can also monitor them that what exactly is happening so you can see that there are some uh, like rectangles here uh, the this rectangle also we are providing a solution that is called auto backflush uh, filter uh, auto backflush controller that will make sure that uh, this uh, uh, hydrocyclone filter will not shock and after some regular interval or the the, the interval that we decide it will be automatically flush the water so that it, similarly at the right hand side we are having another product where we are making sure that irrigation and the fertigation can be pre-planned and uh, depending upon the timing it can control different bulbs and here at the below side we see that there is small field where we are doing the irrigation or fertigation but there and here we see there is one control valve but there can be uh, multiple control valves if we have a bigger field so for that also we have a uh, solution we have a uh, electronic device or the automation solution that would control the complete complete, uh, complete system that is that is being uh, shown here so this is a simple layout of the micro irrigation system and uh, uh, we have different solutions here and fertigation as we discussed uh, fertigation is uh, generally na nowadays used along with the irrigation so that we can have a controlled way of uh, uh, the fertilizers or nutrients for the crop and we can see that if we use this fertigation uh, uh, different crops is shown in the, uh, the second uh, column and we can increase the yield so if we use the automation the fertigation the yield can be improved the productivity can be increased so there are a lot of opportunities uh, in the global micro uh, irrigation system uh, we from 9.7 usd billion that was 2021 now in by 2026 it is expected that uh, uh, micro irrigation would be adopted by many uh, many farmers and the market size would be 15.1 and it would be uh, successful if we start using the technology so the rest of the uh, part would be taken by my colleague mr rishab he is uh, uh, senior executive in uniconvers technologies and where he would explain that what kind of technologies are used in agriculture in general and what kind of products and solutions are being provided by uh, Uniconverse Technologies and what kind of deployment we have made so far. So uh, over to Mr. Rishabh. Uh, thank you everyone for your time.
Okay. Thank you, Kaushal sir, for your uh, valuable inputs on the smart irrigation system. Now I will be taking part of the how IoT and technology we are using in irrigation in order to make it smart and also uh, what is the today's agenda like how we are leveraging IoT in smart agriculture. So I think my screen is visible. Okay, so let's start with advancement of technology and irrigation that how technology is evolving and how it is helping in irrigation systems so firstly like we discussed that there are a lot of automated irrigation systems so basically these systems work on these three principles mainly they work on like these three one is volume based automated irrigation system where we decide that there is certain amount of water that need to be put in a particular crop and According to that, we program the system and by the help of a flow meters and we monitor that how much kiloliters or how much liters of water is required on daily basis, on weekly basis or monthly basis. The another uh, one is like time based irrigation system that mostly inexpensive irrigation controllers use. So in this, we set a time lag we need uh, two hours of irrigation in this field, one hour irrigation in the, uh, in the another crop and two hour irrigation in another crop. And similarly like this, we divide our uh, output uh, that our water based on time basis. So uh, the output of the pump is fixed. So we know that how much water is needed. And then according to that, we will just uh, start the system based on time. The third one is our like smart system, they are relying on real time feedback systems where soil moisture sensor, weather data, these data are collected via the sensors and then the irrigation systems take care of the uh, um, yield or the crop automatically. So it is like uh, based on the moisture level that this crop needs this much of water, like it needs 20% irrigation up for now, 50%. So it is completely smart system. So here is like a typical example that we have a soil sensor, we have a temperature sensor, we have a plant weather sensors, these kind of sensors we have and then we have a drip and irrigation controllers and they are connected wirelessly over a LoRa network. So I will be covering what LoRa network in the upcoming slides. So this is connected to wireless network because wireless network are pretty much need for this current irrigation scenario because wiring is not a feasible option and then how use of drones in agri tech like also uh, in india or in many other countries like drones are very much popular in in different different sectors so in agri tech also drone are very much uh, are, are going to be used like in uh, uh, mainly used in like a uh, uh, crop monitoring, growth monitoring, soil analysis of the soil field. Also, if we are apart from farming, if you are doing livestock uh, management, we can do crop check, health check can be done. And also the major one is like we can do uh, the spraying, the spraying of insecticide, pesticide uh, and the nutrient can be done using drones. So like in developed countries, they are used, uh, they use a small propeller based plane then from there they put their chemicals or uh, their fertilizer or their in insecticide or pesticides uh, by the help of pain but now for a developing country drone are the much more feasible and the cheaper option so again 
ai is also playing a very vital role in the agriculture sector like predictive analytics can um, help our farmers in making better decisions because once we have the sensors then we have a lot of data that how uh, uh, we have to uh, use certain right amount of fertilizers right amount of irrigation right amount uh, what time we should harvest what time we should sow our uh, uh, plants then this will create uh, keep on uh, make sure that our yield will be increased and based on the historical data this decision will be taken care and now then nowadays with smartphone drones robotics farmers farmers can also document their crop process like uh, they can also learn like how their crop is growing and what are the other conditions that are coming if there is some kind of a disease that is coming to crop they can also easily notify it so this is how ai is uh, being used in agriculture but today we are only focused on iot and uh, ir smart irrigation so maybe we will cover this in our upcoming webinars so now question is why we should be irrigation to be smart or precise as questions are already covered this point like water is a very scarce resource like there is limited amount of water available uh, only on a planet that are that can be used for certain purposes uh, but the day by day the water is uh, becoming the water level the ground water level is going low and low another one is like it is also if we are do, using excessive water like it is deteriorating the soil quality because the uh, uh, the fertile soil which is uh, which is it is like a uh, 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 cut away by the excess amount of water and things uh, it is in not salinity of the soil also increasing day by day and, and also it is making very infertile again the another thing is like it is very labor intensive the normal uh, irrigation methods are labor intensive like there is someone need to be there in order to uh, control the irrigation or uh, switch between from one crop to another crop so these are the things and also if we use much water it it means we have to run our pumps motors on a long time then if the, our energy consumption will be also higher so like if the energy if we are not planning the it is in a very quite proper manner then the in, our energy consumption will be higher and then this led to like uh, the the carbon emission and things which leads to climate change so why precision irrigation so here is a, a thing as you can see like 30 to 50 percent of crop increase in crop productivity we can gain, gain it from precision irrigation and it improves the use of fertilizers fertilizer efficiency up to 30 percent and also it reduces the dependency on the rainfall like in india mostly the production is dependent on the rainfall the month it is dependent on the rain, rainfall so it also reduces uh, the dependency and 70 percent of fresh water is consumed by agriculture which is a lot more so this uh, this need to be come down because we want to reduce the use of water in the agriculture on the same time we have to increase the production uh, also the precision irrigation reduces manpower and the operation cost because the, if, uh, no uh, person will be required to uh, run the um, irrigation system and also operational cost because the energy consumption and these things will be reduced and here you can again see that it reduces the greenhouse emission emissions up to 90 percent compared to flood irrigation because flood irrigation requires a lot of water a lot of energy to be there and also you can see 35 percent of a con consumption of energy is reduced because by the 2050 we have like 10 billion of people on a planet that need food so if we uh the the demand of the food will be rising rapidly like it is keep on rising on the same time our resources like water and uh, energy are keep on decreasing so we have to be more precise in order to use it in a sustainable manner 
so here is like what are the challenges of a traditional irrigation method like if this is part is already covered by kaushal sir but uh, let me go through once again so mostly what happened like even 50% of uh, water that is used in irrigation is either evaporated or run off uh, because they rely on a simple timers like uh, uh, on a time based irrigation on a volume based irrigation system they just rely on that how much water we need to put uh, but what happen if the water is evaporating very quickly uh, what if it is running off and going to some other field or going to lower area and not reaching to higher area because the field is not leveled and the regardless whether the drip system or sprinkler system is used like if we are using a uh, modern day irrigation systems like drip in irrigation system and sprinkler irrigation systems then also we we don't know like uh, how much water is re required and how much water is needed in in the uh, days like some some days like when the, the days are hotter like it we require more water when the uh, environment is cooler and temperature is down then we need some another amount of water so that all the things can be helped monitored with the help of sensors and uh, another the iot provide an efficient approach of managing irrigation water like with the help of iot we can uh, properly manage the like, what amount of water we are using so here are some of the benefits of a smart irrigation system so like apart from these benefits there are some uh, other benefits uh, like uh, we can quality control of water reservoirs efficient to use of water management and then also we can uh, detect the water leakage like if there is leakage in any of our systems on any of our pipelines that can be also detected and which is helping again help in the saving of water monitoring of water quality also and we can also with the help of sensors we can monitor the ph level con uh, co content of the water so again it improves the water quality and safety also with the help of proper uh, metering of a water uh, supply we can all, there will be transparency in the consumption like how much each individual is consuming again um, prescriptive the maintenance of the infrastructure can be done like uh, if there is some uh, kind of anomaly that is going detected in the irrigation system that can be also be reduced and also the overall it reduce the human effort because uh, now the irrigation system is smart there is no human intervention is needed everything is taken care by the help of sensors softwares uh, so the human intervention is very much very less like uh, it reduce uh, to a very a uh, lower level but there are some challenges also in the smart irrigation because there is also a lot of challenges here like you can see a cost because in india or in, in any other developing nation cost is a uh, cost is a very important factor uh, in purchasing something or in deploying anything uh, because already agriculture is not in india it is not a very highly profit margin business so cost is a very important sensitive part uh, the another one is like data transmission because how because these smart systems will require some kind of network or some kind of internet connections but in a field like in a remote area the uh, the data transmission will be a challenge because we, there we cannot uh, like lay down our fiber optic wire or ethernet wire then the data transmission is a challenge again power supply is also a big challenge because in a field more, mostly there is no power line and uh, power is not available on the every end of the there is power available on the motor uh, on the motor or a tube well where the system is installed but on the every field level or the power supply is not available another thing is like wiring because if we want to move uh, this power and data data transmission line to a sensor then we have to do a lot of wiring which is not feasible in the agriculture area because we have to do ploughing and other things and that is not possible if we put a lot of wire in that because wiring can uh, be danger uh, uh, not feasible and also it will be more costly and also it will be danger dangerous for per, per animal and a person health also 
because if there is some kind of cut in the wire then it can lead to electric shocks also but then another question is the durability because if we are putting our devices and the sensors in a very harsh environment like it is exposed to the environment it will be uh, in the rain it will be in the dirt so it has to be very durable so the system should be high industrial grade to take care of this all the thing so apart from this uh, irrigation is also not only limited to farms only that the irrigation has its also use cases in the smart cities like uh, cities consist of gardens and parks that need to be irrigated in order to ma maintain the greenery for uh, there it is, can be used the another thing that we nowadays we are planting trees on the uh, side of the highways on the mid, mid lane of the high roads and the highways so they are also need to be irrigated on a uh, daily basis or like on a weekly basis so that need to be done because this also need to be automated because it is not always possible to go and manually irrigate a, such a long stretch of uh, road as okay and the another one is like uh, the stadiums or the public places where the we want to maintain the greenery so irrigation is also uh, a very key role in this uh, smart city concept so here you uh, we have uh, shown you an example like how we are doing a irrigation of plantation on a highway using loravan because smart uh, cities are uh, using loravan so with the help of LoRaWAN, the irrigation systems can also be deployed. It is one of uh, uh, the cities in, in India, the Hyderabad, where the smart drip irrigation system is deployed. I will cover this in uh, upcoming slides. So question is like, why we need LoRaWAN in irrigation? So first thing is like, uh, this is a wireless network. If you don't know LoRaWAN, LoRaWAN is a wireless network. Uh, that stand for long range wireless area network. It uh, is a very low power consumption uh, the network which uh, takes up very low power and it works in a sub gigahertz range and it is completely royalty free. Or it means that it is complete work in ISM band that is free in mostly areas. So like uh, LoRaWAN increase the connectivity. So every sensor and device now can connect using LoRaWAN. So it creates the net, uh, local wireless area network. Again, the deployment is very easy since there is no wire, no cabling is required. The sensors are deployed wirelessly and they can be up, also updated, uh, connected via over the air method or they can be connected via manually also. So also it reduces the possibility of danger for the crop and farmer because we are not putting any wires or uh, cables which are carrying power or 220 volt uh, electricity. So it uh, it is also good for crop and farmers. And also uh, it has a long range, like a theoretical range of a LoRa van is 10 kilometers. So we can collect data from a long range. Also it reduces our, because now we don't have to uh, do the civil work for the cabling and the uh, cabling thing and the other things so the cost is overall reduced and the sensors are also not that expensive so it will reduce the cost also the edge ai system that we are talking like how to predictive analytics can be done can be incorporated using LoRaWAN because these are the sensors which can collect uh, a lot of parameters uh, from our fields so we can get this data and make a use of ai and then we can do predictive analytics crop protect crop yield prediction uh, disease prediction these kind of thing can be done so here like what are the differentiated are the benefits of a LoRaWAN network so it is like public network and private network devices can get over the air update there is a geolocation and tagging also and it is a highly secured network it was on AES 128 bit encryption and it is a battery power system so it can be powered up to 10 plus years on a single battery and it provide a very good range in rural and non-cellular areas like uh, mostly the farms are in the rural area their cellular connection is not very good 
so there loravan can be utilized and also it has a very deep penetration like it can penetrate from concrete steel ground steel a deep vegetation like a uh, like a plants or cats it can very easily penetrate so here is the architecture of a lora loravan networks that how loravan can be implemented on a farms like here you can see there is one farm there is another farm there is another farm and they are connected using a gateway they are that is loravan gateway and here only we need a internet this farm doesn't need a internet so we don't need to have do the cabling everywhere like all the cabling only need to be done here these send node can be solar powered or can be battery powered and then from there it can connect to a server where we can uh, use our mobile for app or our lap laptop to do the cloud cloud based irrigation system like we can use a, a software to program that what uh, uh, what are the parameters like how much water it is needed or also based on the sensor data it can uh, start and stop the irrigation autonomously so this is a typical loravan irrigation architecture so you can see there are solenoid valves which are used to control the water flow it can be connected to any sprinkler rain gun or a drip irrigation system and then we will have a temperature humidity sensor for uh, monitoring the temperature and the humidity soil moisture sensor light sensor and then there will be a rain gauge a rain sensor that is uh, we can measure the rainfall and there will be a motor starter if we are the irrigation is a depend motor based then motor starter will be needed and then there will be a water level sensor if there is any kind of a reservoir or the tank then water level sensor will be required and here you can see it's a sample application of a farm where we, temperature sensor is there humidity sensor is there pumps are there and rain gauge is there and then they are sending data to our loravan gateway that uh, collects all the data and then with the help of 2g 3g network 4g network ethernet wi-fi it can send data to a cloud server from where a, a farmer can access from their smartphone and manage their farms so we at uniconverge are like oem of products that are work uh, can uh, that are used in agritech domain so we are a industrial automation company as well as uh, we are utilizing the same technology in agricultural domain so like we are manufacturer of a backflush controllers that are mainly used in uh, our uh, drip irrigation or sprinkler irrigation and then we are loravan based solenoid rtu controller irrigation and fertigation controllers that are used to control the irrigation and fertigation and then we have sensors like temperature humidity sensors moisture electrical conductivity and moisture sensor and then ph sensor for water uh, quality so this is our auto backflush controller uh, we are uh, uh, this is a like uh, it has used basically in uh, uh, it can be used for many a uh, kind of media filters including sand filter uh, disk based filter screen based filters so there is this is used like Kaushal sir showed you in earlier slide that how that how filter is uh, is used in drip irrigation or micro irrigation. So this is a, a device which can detect that whether the filter is choked or not. Let's say because it is continuously uh, like uh, filling with sand and it is continuously uh, uh, taking dirt away from the dirt and particle from the uh, water then the filter uh, the membrane of the filter or the filter get clogged up so now we have to clean the filter regularly so in earlier days it is done by manual like people uh, go there and just manually clean take out the screen and manually clean it but now this can be done done on the time based also it can be done on based on sensors like uh, we have a differential pressure sensor which sense that there is a choking in the filter and then automatically it cleans the filter and then also we can manually flush the filter uh, like manual flushing for a loop in direction is there any problem with sensor or any kind of filter is totally clogged up then it gives us alarm uh, like uh, uh, that filter is clogged and it is not uh, 
uh, it is jammed and it is not working properly so you, you a user can go there and check and also it has poor potential free output so whether we can connect a motor valve or actuator depending on the type of filter we are operating and, all, and it works from a wide range of uh, power supply ranging from 9 to 24 volt dc based on the uh, your solenoid coil voltage and the motor voltage so this is one of the uh, uh, this is the product one of our customer uh, partners are using like they are taking uh, our auto back flush controllers and putting on their screen filters And it is not it is limit not limited to screen filters also. It can be used on fan media filter, disc filters also, hydrocycler filters also. And uh, this is a screen filter. So this screen filters, fan media filters, and disc filters. It can be used in any of them. And also it can be used on a single filter and also on the battery of filters. Like multiple filters can be connected to a single uh, device now we have rtu solutions like we have wireless wa solenoid wall controller solution so in this we have two solutions one is lora based solution that is a completely local solution which doesn't require any internet and the another one is a lora van based ir irrigation system which is uh, more like a internet based scenario so i will be covering both so this is in LoRa based irrigation system, we don't require any internet. So it, it doesn't require any kind of internet. And the another thing is like, it can be pa paired with existing irrigation control. Like there are several irrigation controller from different, different companies that are used to control. But the problem is like, we have to lay down the wire. Like wire uh, will have to go to uh, a certain location. So, that is a problem because then we have to place our walls very uh, like on a very closed area because the wire length cannot be long so this creates a problem in deployment so uh, basically these systems are take that input and control the wire control the wall remotely so and it is very easy to install as it has no any kind of a wiring that is required and it is solar powered device so basically no power wire or no signal wire be required and it has a range of up to two kilometers uh, that is ideal for large farms and also if we want to have more range then we can use repeaters to extend the range also like uh, if we can if the range is like 1.5 kilometers we are getting then we can place a repeater there and the range is again extended to 1.5 so the effective range will be three kilometers This is the architecture. Here uh, we have a base unit which connect to any of the irrigation controllers, PLCs, HMIs. Uh, we can connect it to that. Then we have uh, a base unit which can take eight, it come in configuration of eight volt, 12 volt, 16 and 24 volts uh, there. And from here, there are remote units which have four volts, the maximum four volts we can control on a, a single node. So uh, here we have the walls around here and they can be separated like each can be like a two, two kilometer apart in radius. This is the product. This is our like the center one is our base unit controller and this side, this is our end remote units and it has it connect to solar panel. It has an onboard battery. So uh, if there is no solar power, it can also work in a night uh, scenario it can also well, uh, also in cloudy scenario it can work it has a battery backup of two to three days and here are some of the deployment done by our part client partner uh, who, who are using our product so here you can see uh, this is a solar panel uh, which is uh, put on the rain gun and uh, this is our device and here is our base unit that is connected to our irrigation controller and now we talk about the more latest technology that is LoRaWAN based so only LoRaWAN is like wide area so there is some requirement of internet but only gateways require the internet the sensors doesn't require the internet 
the range is like a theoretical range is 10 kilometers but practically 3 kilometers is very much possible and now we can control the irrigation via sensor based method uh, via cloud app mobile app or uh, it can be time based volumetric and real time based so all these can be done using loravan based system and there we can introduce different different kind of sensors also like we can use moisture sensor electric uh, conductivity sensor in temperature humidity sensor can be integrated in the system and it reduces the wiring again and it is easy because it reduces the wiring then it is easy to install and also the nodes are solar or battery powered so again no wiring is needed so this is the spec of our loravan remote units like it can uh, do up to four walls and apart from four wall operation it can uh, take a sensors like it has four digital input and four digital output four digital what output are used for wall operation and four digital input can be used for flow sensors or uh, that can be used for flow sensors or flow meters like we can sense the amount of water that is flowed um, uh, that is going uh, which is required for volumetric irrigation again battery reports we can get from here like what is the battery status uh, what is the charging status and also we it can interface with other sensors like temperature humidity sensor can be interfaced flow meters can be interfaced and also it has a configurable battery options depending on the user requirement like if the user requirement is uh, small like they are operating one or two walls then the battery can be smaller if the if the user requires a lot of uh, working out then battery is a larger so it helps in reducing the overall cost so this is a typical use case like here you can see some of the sensors are deployed and here is our uh, lora van based irrigation controllers is deployed so in a field and they are controlling the sprinkler rain gun or the drip irrigation lines and these data can be collected to a central gateway which is backhauling can be done using 4g or ethernet and then uh, from this cloud platform a farmer can monitor his crops control the irrigation and uh, also monitor the key parameters like uh, soil moisture um, ph level of the water and uh, fertigation can also be done from here so this is the again this is the architecture that how this is deployed like here you can see flow uh, one solenoid is deployed deployed with one flow sensor uh, which ensures that whether the solenoid is on or off or whether the water is reaching there or not so this is the typical architecture and then we have a loravan gateway because gateway is required pretty much required in loravan setup so this is our loravan gateway it supports like uh, ethernet 4g and wi-fi backhauling And this is the IoT cloud platform that we are uh, we are using for like con controlling the irrigation. So we have de designed a smart irrigation system for utilities, which is in uh, software as a service model, uh, where we, uh, you can control all all the irrigation lines and equipment using this software. So here you you have to select whether where you want to uh, do the irrigation that are like packages and from there you can uh, in under the packages location can be uh, set and from there you can just select like what are the programs which program you want to add it supports like three program irrigation program and there you can choose where, which valve you want to operate at what duration and what time you can just feed in the time and the schedule and it will work accordingly and here is the web dashboard so here you can see like all the data which pump is on which pump is off all the your irrigation can be monitored so this can be used for individual farmers also who have a large farm or a utilities or a bigger or in areas that manage multiple of farms so this is the dashboard and here you can see all the report of the walls 
like uh, how all, how much irrigation is done and how much is pending and what are the flow rate that is is used the another is like our temperature humidity sensor it is also loravan powered so we have different kind of sensors that are used in irrigation what this is one of them and it is completely battery powered and also it can be powered by solar uh, and then we have a irrigation and a fertigation control this is our oem product so this product is uh, used for like uh, replacing the irrigation controllers so it can be uh, paired with our uh, wireless system also or it can be for a small form it can be used directly so it has like uh, two independent programs it can it has it can have four start stop times it controls up to six walls uh, including which four walls are for the station controller one is for fertigation and one is for irrigation and it is a bat it has battery backup it has sensor integration like low flow sensors rain sensors it supports a pump start relay so pump can be started from this so uh, uh device only and it takes care of all your irrigation schedules like it just automates the irrigation you just come program this controller and all the irrigation will be taken care of by this like once the mains power supply is there it will turn on the pump do uh, do the time based irrigation this is a time based irrigation system like uh, it uh, it utilizes this uh, uh time so like you have to fill like wall four one will be run two hours wall two will run three hours so it is basically uh, work on time based irrigation and here are some of the projects that we have done so far so this is a project we have done a orr hyderabad drip irrigation project and it is a quite big uh, project like we have 158 kilometers of a uh, stretch of a highway that is being irrigated using loravan networks and we are controlling over 600 valves uh, there are 50 more there are 50 pumping locations so 50 motors are there like uh, we are controlling uh, using and also we are monitoring flow meters pressure sensors with the help of flow meter and the pressure sensor we are able to detect whether the irrigation is happening or what are the errors even we are able to detect the water leakages also and also it has a low level and high level that's a for the tank le tank level and all the data is backhauled using 4g uh, network and it support both the uh, time based uh, irrigation system and the volumetric irrigation system and then we have the modules like leak generation uh, sorry report generation leak detection and water consumption analysis so this is the product uh, project architecture like there are remote units uh, they have four walls underneath this is the same remote unit i have shown earlier and now there is a gateway which connect to pumps flow meters pressure sensors rain sensor and level sensors and then it is backhauled to uh, ether internet via 4g network so here are the, some of the sample images here you can see this is the our product that are like this is this one is our uh, complete LoRaWAN system uh, which is set next to here here you can see this is small box is our control panel and this one is the motor control panel and here you can see our flow meters and the pressure sensors and these are the remote unit they are solar powered deployed on the drip lines so here you can see the pipeline and this is the control so, center so from here the irrigation is controlled and monitored on a daily basis so the schedule is set from here like what what that how much water is required on which stress this is controlled by from uh, this uh, control center so this is from the, uh, our side and um, it is the end of the webinar so if there is any questions from you you can ask and you can also tell us like how iot will you can share your ideas with us like how iot can help in revolutionizing farming and irrigation applications so you can also uh, also uh, give your feedback
so dear participant if you have any query you can ask okay so i think okay this rohit is saying like he, he so he has some query how can he unmute so if sir uh, i will so you can I just will... type it here yes uh, questions are uh, like uh okay there are some questions so you can type in your questions like here i i will take uh, the question uh, if you have any questions uh, you can type for soil monitoring leaf disease we can use yes yes sir computer vision can be used but that data should have to come to uh, that there so that can be done using wireless network like we can uh, or using our, our drones like drone and uh, can be done also 5g can be better utilized in doing the computer vision thing like we can place the cameras and they can detect the leaf disease thing. hello hello Hello, Risha, bro, this side, can you hear me? Hello? Hello. Yes. Yeah, Risha, am I audible? Yes, 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 yes. Sir. Uh, so, uh, I have got a couple of questions. Uh, by the way, brilliant product line and uh, brilliant presentation of it. So, uh, my first is is uh you uh, you have shown a successful project uh, which must be uh, government sponsored or some private contractor might be involved who have deep pockets how do you uh, compare that with a farm uh, farm kind of project wherein smart agriculture smart fertigation per se can be used yeah. and you can yeah. solve the cost yeah. yeah. these are the system like which we have sold apart from this uh like cloud based system that the another one we have sold that the lora based system that is only deployed in farm like we haven't put these references because we cannot get the images there from the farm side but these systems are like pretty much used by the farmers the farmers who own like uh, 5 hectare 10 hectare of land they are using these systems like uh, initially what they are using they are using some kind of irrigation controllers and uh, they have to manually lay the wire mm -hmm. so now they are using our these our lora van uh, sorry our lora base and remote unit solutions for their controlling of the wall system so what they are doing they are just completely replacing the wire uh, removing mm -hmm. the wire and now they are putting our base unit there and also there is a remote unit uh, they are putting next to the wall only okay and the another sure. project product we i we have is like our irrigation and fertigation controller so it is a very low cost product that is for a regular farmer because it has only four walls so a small farmer need is mostly pulpin in like three or four control walls like so uh Rishab, one is for farmers who are already uh already into some kind of progressive irrigation technology uh like they were uh, facing issues with wires and also lora when could come in and solve that problem but uh, what about people who are already like currently are using flood irrigation and when we ask them to shift to uh, drip or sprinkler so there is practical example of it that uh, there is significant uh, drop in the yield in the first few years so is there any data or research or any case study wherein you have shifted a farm from flood irrigation to a smart fertigation kind of system using drip or uh, sprinkler system wherein you didn't oh, face any such any such losses in yield no sir actually sir we work in a different way like we are like oem equipment manufacturer provider and then we provide uh, the we provide these solutions to the irrigation companies who are already 
players and the irrigation solution and they put they uh, they use our you product so you you don't have direct connect with the farmers per se no okay. no no we are like uh, we don't do directly we, we are a b2b platform like sir we are only for businesses like we are we are oem for these irrigation companies okay. we don't uh, do farmer inter like this so uh, is there any way we can get hold of your uh, price line and delivery time of the solution and if like services are needed in deep northern parts of india how 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 is your service network over here uh, that can be done sir like uh, our team will contact you uh, you can sh uh, if they will contact yeah, your team contact has you. my email id rohit yes, no, yes, sir. rohit has rohit has my email id so i would love okay. to uh, understand the price range and what kind of service network we can expand okay. in northern india yes yes sir. yeah definitely sir. okay thank you so much okay okay so i i think there are no more questions for now so now we are ending up the session. Thanks participant for joining. So thank